This was supposed to be a piece of art to hang on my bedroom wall. Instead, it's become a placemat. Good morning everybody, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is my weekly vlog on Monday, May the 28th, 2018 and it's vlog number 69. And let's get right into things because there's lots of things to tell you about. Um, right behind me is quilt number 8. I have finished quilt number 7 but I showed that on Stephen and Walter Live a week ago and I think you saw it on my vlog as well. I got the binding all done on it, it's all quilted and to date that's my largest quilt, uh, finished quilt, and uh, I think my best one. This one is huge, all right? So I'm just gonna get off my perch here and let you see it. I can't get the whole thing into the shot. Uh, I did show this yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live, but this is all made, this is just the quilt top. It hasn't uh, had the backing put on or the batting in or anything like that. I still have to quilt it, but it is huge in comparison to what I've done before. All of the material you see in this quilt with the exception of the dark green and that runs you can't see it but it runs over to the other side as well uh, with it and there's green on the very top and on the bottom. It, it's a big quilt. It's 69 inches by 91 inches in size. Um, these are all my own materials. Uh, the ones that I've designed and that I had printed at uh, and made into fabric at Spoonflower. Um, so this one's going to be a challenge to quilt. I can tell you that right now. Uh, I haven't tried to quilt anything this big on my domestic machine, but I am going to quilt it. Now, am I going to do free motion? No. I haven't taken that class yet, and I've been experimenting with free motion on small, small little uh, quilt uh, practice pieces. Um, and to date, I suck at free motion quilting. It's as simple as that. I'll probably use walking foot quilting on this. I'll probably do a very simple design. I'm thinking right now a wavy des design, which is what I did in that little quilted square that you, sorry, I got the hiccups. That little quilted square that I showed at the beginning of today's video. Um, I think I'm going to do that because that is something that you can keep in a straight line and I have a problem keeping things in straight lines and looks very nice when it's done. It is simple, but then again, this quilt is fairly complex in its colors and design. So I think a simple quilting uh, stitch will look the best on it. So I bought the batting. I bought the backing material, which is a really nice uh, purpley color. And um, I just have to put the layers together. And I'll be honest, I've been sort of procrastinating about this. I did this whole top in one day. Um, that didn't include cutting of the, the strips. It is from a pattern, um, a pattern I got at Ultimate Sewing uh, that I liked. Uh, I got, you see this panel in the, in the center here. Well, that's why I got this particular pattern because I want it to feature, you know, a larger piece of my fabric that I have designed. And that comes right out of one of my art journals. So this pattern seemed to work well with that. It is a very busy quilt, I'll admit to that. Uh, but a lot of colors in it and um, yeah I'm I'm really quite proud of what I've created here so far I hope I don't screw it up that's why I've been procrastinating putting the layers together and getting started on the quilting I also need a big space to quilt this on so I think I'm going to have to temporarily rearrange the placement of my sewing machine in my sewing room so I have more table width to put this on um, because it's going to get pretty heavy it's the size of a twin. That's what it says, at least in the directions uh, that I made. So I am building my way up to a queen size quilt. And my ultimate uh, goal is to design, make a queen size quilt for our bed. Um, and Walter has been decorating or repainting the bedroom right now as, as we speak. And I have a little video about that later on. So stay tuned to see what we're doing to that room. Anyways, yep, this was a challenge, but that's how you learn. Challenge yourself. So um, what else? Well, 
some people have asked me, so you doing any mixed media these days? <laughs> Guess I've all been about quilting. And yes, I have been. And I did put up a video about this little project here. And uh, you know uh, that I've mentioned it before, the big trend right now is to do these reverse canvases, which to me are kind of dumb. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to offend anybody by saying that, you know, it's, it's still art and all that kind of thing. But what people are doing are taking um, cheap stretched canvases, pulling the staples out, uh, so the canvas comes off the frame, flipping the frame over and putting the canvas back on after you do something on it. So you get sort of a shadow box effect. Well, in my way of thinking, why not just take the bloody canvas and turn it upside down? Yes, you will see um, the staples, but you can paint over those. And that's exactly what I did here on this one. So this is a reverse canvas, but what I want to call it is more or less a shadow box canvas because essentially it becomes a shadow box. Do you see any staples? No. Are they there? Yes, they are hidden. I've designed it in such a way that I could paint over them and hide them with the other elements that are on here. Now, I have a whole process video about this and I've listed it below. It's called the Mixed Media Shadow Box Canvas. So if you're interested in seeing what I went through to create this, this took several days, actually a week to make, only because I couldn't figure out what I was going to do with it. I just grabbed a bunch of stuff from my stash and went from there. I even started off with a whole totally different color for the canvas and I scrapped that. But I left that in the video so you could see my process. Um, so you could see what I was going through as I made decisions as to making this. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, once I got into it, it was kind of fun to make as well. And it's a great way to use up a stash of items that, you know, you've got laying around you don't know what to do with. So, and it's kind of freeing too, because I really didn't do a lot of planning in advance of this, and that will be apparent in the video. Um, I just started going with the flow, and that's what I came up with. And I think it turned out not half bad. So anyways, um, yes, I am still doing mixed media. And I'm going to be talking about a couple of other things later on in the vlog today that are going to get me back into mixed media as well. But I still love doing the quilting. Okay. One other thing that I want to talk about, and I'm going to insert a video right after this uh, to show you. Some people were saying on Stephen and Walter Live yesterday that they weren't getting notifications uh, from my YouTube channel about when I put up a new video or when I was going live. Um... I've heard that complaint on from other people with other YouTube channels as well. It seems that YouTube changed something in their notification algorithm. I don't know what they changed or why they did it. Uh, of course, YouTube's not talking about it. Um, but a lot of people have been having this problem. There is a way to solve the problem, however. And so I created this little video clip that I'm going to insert right here for you so you can see what to do if you're not getting or you don't think you're getting notifications of when I or anybody else you subscribe to puts up a new video. Okay, there's been some changes on YouTube which are causing some people a bit of grief. Uh, for some reason, in YouTube's infinite wisdom, they have done something that uh, has eliminated our automatic notifications. At least that's what I think is what has happened. I've had several people say they're not getting notifications when I put up a new video. And I've heard the same uh, complaint from other people watching other YouTube channels. And I have been experiencing this myself. So the way to get around that is, first of all, and I'm just going to use this site as an example, Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you just click on the subscribe button as it appears uh, at the top of the channel. And uh, here it is. And you can see on this one I'm already subscribed, so it comes up unsubscribe. But if I hadn't been subscribed to this, it would have just come up as subscribe and away I'd go. But here's the most important thing. It's the bell icon. If you hover, 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 whichever, over top of it uh, for a second, you'll get a little message. Stop getting notifications about every new video. Well, if you click on the bell, and I think you may have to keep, click on it a couple of times. Maybe not. I'm not sure here. Okay. 
If you click on it once, you notice here the bell doesn't have anything around it. It's just the bell itself. And if I click on it once, I get these little lines and it comes up. You'll get all notifications. It's like a toggle switch. If I click on it again, at the bottom of the screen it says you'll get occasional notifications. That may be the problem. It seems to just pick when it's going to notify you if that setting is there. What you want is to click it so you get you'll get all notifications and that should solve the problem. Unfortunately, I think you will have to go through every one of your subscribed YouTube channels and double check what the bell is set at. Don't know why this is happening, but I think that'll solve the problem. So I hope you found that helpful. Okay, so I hope that helps you out with uh, getting your notifications back on track. Um, what's next? Okay, so YouTube channel of the week. There is a magazine. It is a Canadian magazine. You've probably seen this on the newsstands. It comes out four times a year. It's called Creative Scrapbooker. It used to have a different name. I think it was called the Canadian Scrapbooker, but they want to make a more a wider North American appeal. And for some reason, if we put Canadian in titles of things, the Americans stay away from it. I don't know what that's all about. I guess I think we're some foreign little country somewhere, but whatever. So they changed the name some time ago to the Creative Scrapbooker, and this magazine comes out four times a year. Um, I don't always buy it. I, it's a good magazine, but there's a couple of reasons I don't buy it, and one of those reasons is mainly I don't do scrapbooking much anymore. Um, the other reason I don't buy it is I do find that it is very heavy on advertising. Well, of course it is, because that's how they make their revenue. It's not a free magazine. It's not even a cheap magazine. Um, what's it called? It's $12.99 Canadian uh, when it comes out. But it is full of lots of great ideas. Now, I'm not doing the review on the magazine itself, but they have a companion YouTube channel that goes along with this, which I do find somewhat useful. Um, not just for scrapbooking and card making, but also for ideas that you can uh, transfer to mixed media. So here's my little review of that. YouTube channel of the week is Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. Now this is somewhat of a commercial site uh, because they are actually the authors of the magazine called Creative Scrapbooker Magazine, which by the way is a Canadian publication. I believe this magazine comes out about four times a year. It's a magazine dedicated to those people who love to scrapbook. And I haven't been on this site much lately because I haven't been doing a lot of scrapbooking. Uh, as you know. However, I went back to uh, revisit this site and it's full of all kinds of different and interesting techniques that are what I call transferable skills, meaning that they don't necessarily just have to be used for scrapbooking. You can use them for card making, for mixed media, things like that. They also review some of the latest products and show you how to use them, which I also find uh, very helpful. The magazine itself, which as I said comes out four times a year, you can usually pick up at a newsstand. Um, and it's not a bad magazine at all. It's full of a lot of colored pictures of scrapbooking projects and paper crafting projects. Um, it does have a lot of advertising in it as well. Uh, they do not have a lot of advertising though on their YouTube channel. So if you're looking for some new ideas to try out in paper crafting, I recommend uh, Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. So that takes us to this week's person of interest. And originally I was going to have two people of interest, but I'm only doing one this week and I'll tell you why. The person of interest this week is Andrea Roberts, who uh, those of you that are on Stephen and Walter Live know her as uh, Sue DeQ. And uh, she's a regular on there. And so she sent me um, some information about herself and she does a wide variety of different art formats, including some quilting. So I'll let you uh, hear all about her right now. Andrea Roberts is this week's person of interest and she writes to me dear Stephen I finally decided to take a chance and send you some information for your person of the week segment I just turned 65 and plan to retire next year I've worked in various industries for the last 40 years developing and delivering instructor-led training and web-based training I'm one of the lucky ones I've always loved what I've done for a living 
I'm an army brat and moved around a bit while growing up, so I had to learn to entertain myself until I met other children on the military bases. It was during those years I began to love reading. I read different genres, but right now I'm reading a lot about the U.S. Civil War. Regarding my hobbies, well, I have a few. I love making mini albums and scrapbooking. Those hobbies helped me justify all the money I've spent on my photography equipment. Nature photography is my favorite. I've already gone to several national parks and plan to visit more when I retire. I also enjoy making cards. Every week I send a card to a soldier who is stationed somewhere in the Middle East. I've been watching your videos and Stephen and Walter live. For better or worse, you rekindled my interest in quilting. I quilted about 20 years ago. Thanks to you, I've upgraded my sewing machine, bought some fabrics, and have started making a quilt. I chose a pattern I thought would be easy because it doesn't require sewing curves. Boy, was I wrong. I've been having so much fun working on this quilt. Thank you for being an inspiration. Andrea Roberts, a.k.a. Sew DQ. Well, thank you, uh, Andrea, for your uh, email and the pictures of your hobbies. Your quilt is beautiful, and so was your photography and your... Um, other pieces that you do as well, your cards. So I'm glad to see that you've got things already planned for your retirement. It's a good thing to have a plan, I believe, when you retire because you're going to find that you're going to be so busy that you won't realize how you did what you did when you were working. So I hope you enjoy your retirement next year and I look forward to talking with you again on Stephen and Walter Live. Now I mentioned that I had a second person lined up for this week as well, but we've had a technical difficulty. Uh, Anita, who's also a regular on Stephen and Walter Live, uh, sent me a short little video clip uh, about herself, um, also sent me a picture of some of her artwork, and she had a longer video that she said was about 10 minutes long that she was trying to send to me, but due to limitations on the internet and email and things like that, and we've tried different things, she hasn't been able to get it to me yet. Um, we may never be able to get it. So I've put it on hold to see if we can work out that technical problem for next week. And I've asked Anita if we can't get the video, can she send me some still pictures? Those seem to come through okay. Of some more of her projects and the area she lives in and things like that. And uh, I'll present that um, on here next week for the vlog. So stay, be sure to tune in next week to hear all about Anita. Okay, and if you'd like to be a person of interest, I have information about that in the comments below. Also in the comments below, we have our my resource list uh, for this week. I have the link to the latest Stephen and Walter Live. Um, how to, uh, a tutorial video on how to fussy cut using your Cricut, whether it's the Explorer Air or the Explorer Air 2 or the Cricut Maker using print and cut. I, and in that video too, I was experimenting with a, a new video program that allows me to capture screens. And actually I ended up, the, the video became a little bit complex in the actual making of it because I used my PC, I used my iPhone, and I used my iPad and put those all together. So you will notice a, a difference in the quality of the audio in certain parts. Sorry about that, but it was an experiment. I'm still playing around with this new piece of software that I have. Um, I also have the link to the mixed media shadow box canvas that I just showed you and a link to the Creative Scrapbooker magazine uh, YouTube channel and I have a new episode of the Idiot Quilter where I talk in more detail about the quilted square I used as my teaser at the beginning of today's vlog and I explain different things about that um, and why I was such an idiot when I created it. So you might want to tune into that. That's Idi The Idiot Quilter, episode 11. And I also have a link to um, the Image Transfer Workshop book, which I'm going to speak about right now. Yeah, might as well. So, went through my stash of books, pulled this one up, forgot I had it, like a lot of things I forget I have. And this is Image Transfer Workshop. It is by Darlene Olivia McElroy and Sandra Duran Wilson. Three names breaks me up. What is this? You know, Prince Harry and uh, Meghan again getting married. Prince Harry's got what? 12 names uh, that she had to recite off. 
But anyways, I digress. This book is great if you want to learn how to do different methods in transferring images, you know, from magazines, pictures, things like that, onto canvases, onto tags, onto your scrapbooking pages, things like that. Um, image transferring can be very, very tricky. Uh, and there's different ways to do it. Uh, and I have had mixed results when I do these kind of things. This is one reason why I purchased this book. I have tried several of the methods that are in here with some mixed success. Again, there's all kinds of factors that influence whether or not you're going to get a decent transfer. However, this book does explain the process and does help you if you're struggling with it. So it is a really good resource. Um, is it an expensive resource? Well, I bought it at Desur's, which is a, an art store um, in our area, and it cost me about 30 bucks at the time. Um, however, I've put a link to Amazon, and I think the link is to Amazon. Let me just check here. It's the Amazon.ca site, but I'm sure you can get it on Amazon.com for the Americans. And I think you can get it as low as about half that price, around $15, $16, $17 Canadian. Um, again, just a reminder, always look to see if these books are listed as the used in the used section of Amazon listing because I've had great luck with those. Um, most times they come in pristine shape, no problem whatsoever, and for half the price. So, you know, it's a big outlay of money for something you may not be completely sure on, so I would take the chance, and if you want it, but you don't want to spend full price for it, look in the used book section uh, for it. Okay, so that's all the resources listed there for this week. So that takes us to what's pissing me off this week. Well, if you were watching Stephen and Walter live yesterday, I started talking about um, my mother's doctor and about the organization. I call it the CCAC. That's what it used to be called. It now has a much longer name. Why they changed it, I have no idea. But basically, they're the government agency you have to go through to get someone on a waiting list for a nursing home or long-term care residence, as they like to be called now. Well, you know that I've gone through the process. My mother was interviewed, the whole bit. We picked the ones. And all we're waiting on now is for the finalization of the application, which is dependent upon getting a medical report from my mother's doctor. Fine. It's been four weeks since we did the application. So I called up this the, the lady, her name's Crystal, that I'm working with from the CCAC or whatever it's called now and asked her about this. She said, well, they've sent several notices to my mother's doctor about getting the report and to date they hadn't got them, but they'd keep trying. And I asked, would it be, you know, appropriate for me to possibly also contact them and see if we could get it any faster? She said, can't hurt. So I tried. Well, according to the receptionist, because you can't talk to the doctor. I mean, heaven forbid that you should talk to the doctor. They're busy, busy, busy people. Yeah, they're very, very busy, especially in this country because we have a shortage of doctors. Uh, but anyways, and yesterday I went on a whole rant about that, and so I'll save that for, you know, the rebroadcast of Stephen and Walter, Stephen and Walter Live. But anyways, I gave the doctor's office a call. I talked to whatever you call them, the receptionist, whatever, and she's looking on her computer, and computer says, no, we haven't, um, uh, well, according to this, we haven't received anything from the CCAC. And I said, well, I was just talking to them and apparently they've sent it to you several times. She says, well, it's a possibility the doctor has it. Okay. So she's making a note of this, sending it off as an email to the doctor in the office to, you know, look into this and whatnot. And I asked if they could call me back and let me know one way or the other. Did the doctor get it? Didn't the doctor get it? If the doctor didn't get it, then I'll call the CCAC person, let them know that eh, the doctor didn't get it. Or if the doctor did get it, could you like tell me when the doctor's going to send it to the CCAC? Yep, they would do that. That was Wednesday last week. This is Monday. Haven't heard from them. Give them one more day. Mondays are probably not the best day to call. Um, and I'll rattle their chain again about this. I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to call them every day until I get some answer. You know, squeaky wheel gets the oil. I don't care if they find me annoying because they're annoying me. Okay, it's simple as that. But here's what I'm pissed off about. Government agencies, they can't do too little for you. In this country, we have a very high tax rate. That money goes to government agencies to work for us. 
they could care less about us. Okay? I'm not, if it was a private business and I ordered a product and I didn't get it and I complain, complained, that private business would probably go, if they're a legitimate company and they cared about their reputation, would go into first gear to solve the problem. Not with a government agency in this country. Oh, no, 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 no. No. They don't. They move at the speed of a snail on anything. We're talking about their effect on the quality of life of an individual. You know, th this whole thing with my mother, you know, I've talked about this. I'm trying to get her what she needs. I want to keep her well. The government right now, all, all the different political parties, because we're in the middle of an election time in this province, are all talking about the health care and how they're going to do this and how they're going to improve this and how they're going to make this and the whole bit. Empty promises. Well, as we know, they're politicians. That's the only kind of promises they make are empty. Of course they are. Uh, you'd have to be a complete idiot, and I'm not, to really believe that they're telling you the truth. But that's the thing that's pissing me off. You know, I don't work for the government. The government works for me. I pay for these services through my taxes. Why can't I be given quality? because there's inefficiencies, because no one cares, because there's no leadership, because politicians, people in power, are there for themselves. They're not there for anybody else. And if anybody ever says to you that they've entered politics because they want to help everybody, they're full of you-know-what. They do not. None of them. Not any of them. I'm sorry. They don't. They don't care about the people. They care about themselves. They want to have a sense of power because their ego needs it. They want the money that goes with it. In our country, after about six, uh, two terms in office, they get a really nice pension for life. Yeah, cushy, very cushy. And they have people that work for them that look after all the day-to-day -day complaints and business, some well, some not so well. But politicians, the government in general, are not there for the people. And if anybody ever thought they were, you're an idiot. You really are. But here's the whole problem. What are we going to do about it? There isn't a bloody thing. We're helpless in all of this. Oh yeah, every so often we get to cast a ballot. We get to vote for who we want in office. Well, in, right now in this election, it's which devil do you want? Because they're all terrible. Absolutely terrible. If anybody wanted to enter politics to try and make a, uh, a change, it would be impossible. One, you have to have money behind you to run for office. It's not like putting down ten dollars and away you go. It's thousands upon thousands. Second of all, once you get in there, you're just a cog in the wheel as well. Because government leaders really are not leaders. They're figureheads. There's agencies businesses probably, other people in behind pulling the strings. They're just puppets. And unfortunately, those puppets, it all filters down to us and we're all puppets and we're all abused by the system. And so I think if you thought about it really hard, you know, it would upset you to the point of depression. So we just try to not think about it. And in fact, in this country, we have right now in Ontario, the premier of our province could, the next one could be a real Trump-like idiot going in. That's the big fear. And I think he's got a really good chance of getting in. We don't learn from the mistakes of our neighbors next door. And you know what we'd say in Canada though? We'll just go, well, we'll get to vote again in another four years and we'll vote them out. We'll just put up with it. Sorry. That's the way we are. So what am I pissed off about is being a cog in the wheel that has a lot of broken spokes to it for one thing and, you know, listening, not getting what we need uh, in this country and we pay for it. So, you know, it's depressing. Okay, let's move on to something else because I'm starting to depress myself thinking about this. All right. Uh, what's new? Well, I haven't bought anything new. 
believe it or not. Well, I bought some fabric, but who cares? Um, but I did hear back from the representative from Northcott, the company where I'm trying to, you know, show them my fabric designs. And I got a, a very interesting email from their representative who asked me if I could send my original pictures of my original designs without um, being touched up in uh, like Photoshop or being mirrored, especially being mirrored. So if you look right behind me right here, that one's one of my images, but I mirrored it. I did it in quadrants of four, and then I flipped them around, both horizontally and vertically, to create that look. The reason, she said, is because basically they've got a lot of designs where people have just mirrored them, and she'd like to see my original artwork. Well, I took that as a positive, meaning, okay, so you see something in my original artwork that you think you can work with. So I sent her a whole slew of pictures of my artwork uh, unaltered. That was middle of last week. I haven't heard anything since. So I guess I'm going to give them until about the middle of this week. And I'm going to send another email off. Again, the old squeaky wheel idea here. Um, just to see. Because, you know, if I, don't, if I don't promote myself, if I don't be proactive about these things, then things aren't going to get done. As simple as that. Um, so, I mean, I still don't figure that this is going to go anywhere, but at least I'll say I gave it a shot. So, that's what's new there. Okay, book reviews. Well, I already talked about Amy's Transfer Workshop, so we can move ahead. Um, inspiration list and tips. Okay, I'm dying to try this. I don't know if I'll get to it today or not, but... Um, Jelly plates, you know what those are. There's those silicon pads that you put paint on, you make wonderful designs. I've talked about them before. And the company that makes them, um, well, there's several companies that make them, but the one that's really got it all going is called Jelly Arts. And I subscribe to the YouTube channel, and every week they come out with a new idea of how to use them. Well, they're using them with Tim Holtz's oxide inks as opposed to paint. And the results are gorgeous. And I'm thinking, whoa, I can probably do things in terms of fabric design with this. But not only that, but they're great background techniques for um, art journals. And, you know, I teach art journaling uh, classes once a month. So I'm sort of running out of ideas for background techniques. And I'm thinking in September, uh, the class for September, because we shut down during the summer, um, that I want to do something with jelly uh, plates again because the P I've done it before and they really like those. They are addictive and they're a lot of fun and I thought this might be really cool using the oxide inks. So I need to experiment with it but if you're interested in seeing how this works I've put a uh, link in the resources as I've mentioned for their um, YouTube channel and for that particular video that I'm talking about shows showing how to use oxide inks with the jelly plate presses. So you might want to check it out because it's cool. It's really cool. Okay, events in the past week. Well, we started the redecorating process. You know that we uh, have been talking about redecorating the dining room and the living room and the bedroom. So Walter, we've got the paint now. And so Walter decided this weekend he was painting the bedroom and he's painted the bedroom. And I have a little video clip I'm going to insert here in a moment uh, so you can see Walter at work. Now, you're going to say, why is Walter doing all the work? Well, there's a couple of reasons for this. One, I don't like painting. Okay. And one time, years ago, when we first moved into this house and we were doing some painting, I was helping Walter do the painting and I got told that I wasn't doing it right that I didn't know how, what I was doing. Now you see, Walter's father was a professional painter, so Walter feels that he's absorbed it through his pores. Since I don't like painting, you don't have to tell me twice. He was perfectly happy to go off and do it his way, and I was perfectly happy to let him do it his way. So, Walter's doing the painting. Walter also picked the color out uh, in the bedroom. Now, he sometimes pretends that he's allowing me to have a say in what colors he picks. But he and I both know that I know that that's not true. So, luckily, both Walter and I have the same taste. So, if he picks out something, usually I'm going to like it. There's not going to be much of a problem. And since he's doing all the labor anyways, I can live with whatever color he paints it. And he picked a, a decent color for it. So, um, it looks a lot better than the color we had on the wall before. He also picked that one out. 
much. Um, but he's got it all done. He worked like a mad dog Saturday and Sunday. And now we're in the process of putting, you know, everything back together in the room. We've got new window dressings. We're going to blinds. We ordered them a week ago. They came in. We've got them. So he'll probably be putting those up today. Uh, we're getting rid of fabric window dressings everywhere in the house. Um, we like the more contemporary look of blinds, and these are not your grandmother's Venetian blinds, you know, out of plastic or whatever, aluminum. These are those cellular blinds that look like they're made from sort of a, well, they're fabric, but they, you know, let the light in and out and do things. They don't have any strings on them. You can just lift them up, pull them down, that kind of thing. And uh, they're inset into the windows, and we have them in a lot of the windows here in the house, so we're just picking it up from there. In fact, there's only one window in this whole house, and that's in the dining room that still has traditional shears and drapes on it, and they're going to go too once we get around to uh, redoing that room. And it'll be a, a blind in there as well. So anyways, I think it's going to it's going to look actually it just freshens the room up as well. And of course, I would eventually like to do as I've already mentioned a queen-size quilt for the bed. But in the meantime, we have a new bedspread for that. Um, that'll work. But, and I mentioned this in uh, episode 11 of The Idiot Quilter, the little square that I made, my idea was that I was going to make a series of these, frame them, and hang them on the wall in the bedroom. And in, you'll have to watch The Idiot Quilter episode 11, but I explained in there why that idea seemed like a good idea at the time, but didn't pan out. But instead, I'm going to take one of my quilts, in fact, quilt number seven, the one that I finished last week, and I'm going to mount it on the wall. I got to sew some loops into it. Got to get a, a a rod. Get one of those fancy wooden type rods, you know. And it's going to hang uh, behind the headboard of the bed on the wall. I already held it up, and it looks pretty good there. So it's one way to display my quilt, and it's another way to add something interesting to the wall. And when we get that all done in there, I will take a few pictures or a quickie video just to show you what the end product looks like. The video I'm going to insert in here right now just shows you Walter working on the room. So it's two, day two of the painting the bedroom exercise and Walter's now got two coats of paint on the walls in here and he is now preparing to do the trim. So he's got his painter's tape out, marking it all off and so that's his project for today we'll check in later to see how things are going so what you've got basically one coat on yeah on the trim it needs a second one got a little paint on you too huh? yeah I know. Oh. I keep getting stuff on me okay, well we have Stephen and Walter live in 45 minutes. Yeah, no, I know. Okay, so what are you doing now? I'm painting. I know, but what? Well, I'm painting the trim. Oh. Is that the first coat? Well, this is technically the second coat. I've already done all that I missed this piece. Oh, okay. And then I'm doing, I gotta redo the baseboards, and that's it. Oh. Well. You've been very productive. And yeah, once we get the room back together, it'll You're look walking nice. walking across the room with a paintbrush, so. Oh. Well. So there you have it. And this is what the room looks like right now. Disheveled, but this is what the room looks like now. So what's coming up this week? Well, I've got a sewing class on Tuesday night, and this one is, has not been canceled. Yay, that's good. This one's about using my serger, and I'm really looking forward to it. If this class had been canceled, I would have been really disappointed because I've got my serger all cleaned up, all refurbished the whole bit, all ready to go, and I really am looking forward to learning about all the possibilities of using a serger. And then uh, on Thursday night, we have a retirement party at the art gallery to go to. The curator, who's been the curator there for 28 years, she is retiring, and I've worked with her uh, in my volunteer capacity in that. So we're going to her retirement. 
and that'll be very nice. And then one of the people that works on the education team at the art gallery that I work with there as volunteers, he's having his own art show open at the art gallery in the town next door to us. He is a fantastic uh, abstract painter. Um, I've seen his work and it, it'd blow you out of the water. And the only thing that I really feel sorry for him is that they've never done a show of his work right here in the art gallery, in his home art gallery. But they've got really kind of, not weird, but different ideas as to what they should be displaying in the art gallery. And they do support local artists, but they have to be either part of an organization, and I don't even think they like doing those ones, but that's because they've had a commitment to this one uh, association for years. Um, or there's somebody who was local at one time, but it's made a name for themselves somewhere else. Um, so I'm lo really looking forward to supporting um, Wayne, that's the name of this uh, artist, uh, in his first you know, major art show. It should be really good. And then of course, this weekend coming up is Durham Pride weekend. Durham Pride weekend is our once a year LGBTQ event. Um, you know, like any pride, we have a parade. <laughs> it lasts about two seconds. Um, and, you know, there's entertainment and things like that. To be quite honest, last year's, they've had it, this will be the sixth year, I think. Last year's was just pitiful. Just pitiful. I'm hoping this year's will be better, but I have a feeling it's not. It's nowhere near on the scale of Toronto's pride. Um, but it's local, so you know, we got to go and support it. Um, what I'm really curious about though is to see what's going to happen with the uh, police because as you know, I mentioned this before, there was a public meeting with the uh, board for the Durham Pride Committee where they want to hear people's thoughts about whether or not the police should be allowed to be part of the parade. And this has been a very controversial issue in Toronto for the last couple of years. Uh, mostly, um, you know, started by the Black Lives Matter movement, which don't get me onto that one whatsoever. Um, I'm not going there right now. Uh, but needless to say, the Pride Committee out here decided, yes, the police could be included. And I think that's really a step forward and it's very positive and I think that's great. However, I am sure that the ones who don't want the police to do the parade are going to do something that day during the parade. I don't know if they're going to pull the same kind of trick as the Black Lives Matter people where in the Toronto Pride Parade a couple of years ago, they just sat down in the middle of the parade and the parade couldn't continue until there were things done or whatnot. Um, my, my answer to that one though is if they try that stunt with this one, I'll just yell out to the people in the parade, walk around or over, whichever, walk around. Don't let them stop you. Don't let them hijack our day. So anyways, that's really why I'm going. I just wanna see what the excitement of that will be like. So I'll let you know. And what else? Oh yeah, and on Friday night, uh, it's RMG fr Fridays um, at the art gallery again. And Walter's gonna have plenty of opportunity to lob off fingers at this one because the new installations that are in there are just dying to have people sit on them or put their wine glasses on them, which they shouldn't, but it's the way they're designed. And in fact, last week I had a video clip of the new installation. So if you see those big round things that are all about this high up off the floor, they look like coffee tables. Guess what's going to happen? So Walter's going to be busy lobbing off fingers that night. It's also got the pride theme that night as well. So um, last year they had a drag queen who was really good entertainment. I think that drag queen was from Toronto. Um, I'm not sure what they're having this year for it, but uh, it, it could be a very interesting night. And to be honest, I usually find most of the entertainment at these things boring. Um, but I'm not a live music type person. And so I don't really get into it. I don't go to concerts because of that. I'd rather watch a video, okay? Um, that's just me uh, with it. But uh, this one could be quite 
interesting. So I'll let you know what happens with that too. And if I get a chance, I'll see if I can take some video clips. It's, it's kind of awkward because, you know, there's all kinds of people there. And, you know, some people might not appreciate, you know, someone with a camera in their hand, uh, you know, in their face kind of a deal. So we'll see what I can do. Okay, so that brings me to pretty much the end of my vlog, except I have a question for you. Would you like to see what's in my drawers? What I mean by that is I'm thinking of creating a new segment on the vlog and literally going through my stash of stuff, pulling out stuff I haven't looked at in some cases years and talking a little bit about it. See what's in my drawers and maybe do something with it or at least talk about it. Why I've got it, why I haven't thrown it away, that kind of thing. So, you know, if you're interested in that kind of thing, just leave me a comment below and that's what I'm thinking of, of adding to this because I'm starting to run out of YouTube channels to review and I may start to run out of books to review. So I got to fill in the gap somehow. Anyways, that's enough for me for now. So I hope you have a good week. Remember Stephen and Walter Live. Ah, now Sunday, I'm assuming we'll still be doing Stephen and Walter Live at the usual time. Uh, but that is Pride Day. But usually for us, we go down, we watch the parade, they have some vendors and things in a park, we walk around, we're home within an hour. <laughs> kind of sad. But anyway, so right now, as far as I, I figure, we will be doing Stephen and Walter Live at 4 o'clock this coming Sunday, usual time. And we'll be talking about whatever happened at the Pride Parade and other things. So I hope you can tune in and join us or at least catch the rebroadcast. Okay, so remember about those notifications. If you're not getting notifications about when I put up a new video, go in onto my channel, make sure you're subscribed, and make sure you have hit that little bell and look at what pops up off the bottom of the screen that says all notifications. And just keep clicking on it until that does pop up. Okay, so have a great week. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.